Oops. Um, so first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, let me begin by saying that we actually, this past year, made an announcement to uh, target 40 billion in capital, both in terms of investments and financing towards clean energy over the next decade. And it's really a symbol of our conviction and commitment in the clean energy market. And although, as is the case with any kind of emerging market, there is volatility, we do believe that the underlying thesis behind why clean energy has to ramp up uh, you know, is uh, very much compelling. And the reason why I say that is, if you look at the macro statistics out there, there's a pretty stark picture here, right? I'm sure many of you are familiar with the fact that some 1.2 billion people around the world still lack access to electricity. Twice that number still cook their food with, you know, wood or basic biomass, which has pretty significant implications on both health as well as deforestation. And we will be adding another 2 billion to the global population. So at the core of how we actually meet the energy requirements of this population, and how do we do so without depleting our finite resources and having inevitable environmental spillovers, and how do we do so in an affordable way, we have to get the clean energy equation right. And I think there are very many encouraging signs that Ethan shared, and I'll share with you a couple of more that we find very uh, compelling. If you look at the past year, solar PV alone has halved in terms of the cost. And when you think about electricity generation, at the end of the day, it's about an electron, right? No one really truly differentiates where that electricity comes from, as long as it's affordable and it's reliable. And so the quicker we can actually get cleaner forms of energy down the cost curve, the better we will be. And I would venture to say in a few years' time, you are going to see many geographies where solar as well as wind is going to be actually cost competitive and at grid parity with conventional energy, even without subsidies. And we find that trend incredibly compelling. However, on the other side of the ledger, you know, one of the things that I find so much discouraging personally is the fact that you know, we aren't yet fully in open markets. We have discussions around you know, trade barriers and tariffs going on when you know, you, we need to effectively compete globally against conventional forms of energy that has been around for centuries. But I believe that with the right policies and the right market incentives, there are significant amounts of private sector capital that will shift towards cleaner forms of energy. And I'm also encouraged by the fact that I read in a report recently that some 100 countries around the world now have some form of renewable energy policy. We can debate the if relative effectiveness of it, but I find those numbers pretty compelling. And it's also interesting to see that countries in the Middle East, take a look at Saudi Arabia that has some of the richest hydrocarbon reserves, are now looking at solar as a strategic energy reserve. And when we look at those signs, we believe that there is going to be um, a pretty compelling trend towards clean energy. The question is when and how we get there. And uh, you know, I'm also reminded by the fact that um, someone was sharing a story with me about how industry sectors actually develop over time. And I think we often forget, given how long the industry has been around, that when you look at the auto sector in the turn of the century, there were over 100 companies uh, in Detroit alone that was looking at the auto manufacturing sector. And yet, once Ford figured out how to actually you know, assemble en masse in an assembly line and provide the Model T in a very cost-effective way, there was a share cut in the industry and an ultimate consolidation to the big three. So some of the actual share cut that is going in the industry, I think, is inevitable. And I would expect that with the right kind of consolidation, the players that actually emerge will be better actually positioned to compete in the clean energy um, revolution. Thanks.